We dreamed of seeing anime in real life, but we ended up with nightmares. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst live action anime films. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at films produced both in Japan and the US that brought beloved anime and manga stories to life, and uh, failed miserably. I'm going in. Number 10, Black Butler. Huey. One of the most popular anime out there, a live action Black Butler was kind of inevitable. While the choice of actor for Sebastian himself isn't terrible, the rest of the film failed to live up to fan expectations. Most of the blowback falls on the complete character change of Sebastian's master, Ciel, or rather, Kiyo Haru in the movie. Arigatou Why is she a girl and not a boy, and still retaining Ciel's look? Factor in some less than stellar action scenes and tons of boring dialogue, and you've got a dish that needs to be reserved properly, or not at all. Number 9, Speed Racer. Get that weak shit off my track! The Speed Racer anime is fun and simple. Speed takes on the most dangerous races across the globe. When it comes to the live action movie, it got a bit messy. Take whatever you like. The CGI is so overblown that it makes you think you're watching a movie length Hot Wheels commercial. The visuals take priority over the characters, and a jumbled plot really cannot save it. Feel a bit bad for including this one, since the film has developed a cult following, but still, it's by no means a great live action anime film. I mean, the Wachowskis probably should have stayed out of this race. They're not alone. Number 8, Ricky O, the story of Ricky. Bastard, you're asking for it! You talking to me? Sentenced to prison for 10 years for avenging his wife, martial artist Ricky takes the law into his own hands, delivering a most gory fashion of justice. For a movie with such a serious setup, you'd be surprised to find that Rikio is more funny than anything else. The acting is bad, but not nearly as bad as the horrible English dub. You're pretty good. It's too bad you don't follow the rules. The action defines the concept of over the top, but not in a good way. Some of the kills here are just, just silly, man. Is this really what fans of the anime and manga wanted to see? Probably not. You're all free now! Number 7, Cass Hearn. <laughs> when a robot revolution begins, it's up to one lone cyborg with daddy issues to save the world. The previews looked visually stunning and action-packed. Sadly, while the film is both, technically, there isn't much else going for it. <laughs> The characters are not engaging. The plot has so many holes you'll be falling through them with each passing second. And not to mention, it's really friggin' boring. Plenty of anime have the flaw of looking too pretty in order to cover for the lack of a good plot. Live action adaptations should never follow this trope. Number 6, Kite. Many filmmakers, including Quentin Tarantino, have a soft spot for the kite anime, especially for the action scenes. We're not sure they would have the same love for the almost actionless live action feature. Look, I, I get wanting to get rid of the bad stuff. What about the good stuff, huh? Remind me what that would be. The lead character may have a tragic backstory, but her portrayal is really dull. The story is not so impressive either, and the twists, well, you'll see them coming a mile away. Not even Samuel L. Jackson himself could save this film from its dismal 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Number 5, Giver. The Giver. One young man and his alien bio armor are all that stand between alien invaders and total annihilation. While the monster makeup isn't the worst ever, this live action take on the popular 80s anime looks more like Power Rangers than a serious movie. So why don't you just act real nice? Probably the biggest crime here is that while he receives top billing, Mark Hamill isn't the one to don the alien biosuit. That's kind of a missed opportunity, right? Will you save it for later? We still gotta find a way out of here. Number four, 
Devil Man. Hey, we love a good monster throwdown as much as the next person, but when the visuals look like this, come on man, that's cringeworthy. Based on the 70s manga and anime of the same name, Devil Man attempts to paint a faithful recreation of its source material. The story tries to fit in more information than it can and totally fails. The acting is also beyond god awful. And again, let's appreciate that these are the visual effects they've decided to use to bring Devil Man and his demonic opponents to life. Cool. Number 3, Attack on Titan, Part 1 and 2. Attack on Titan is one of the most epic and acclaimed anime of the last decade, and with the promise of an awesome looking CGI colossal titan, this two part movie should have worked. So, what went wrong? Well, the producers took way too many artistic liberties, showing little to no understanding of the main cast, especially fan favorite Mikasa. <laughs> The tone is so sporadic you don't know if you should be laughing or crying when somebody dies. The special effects are also inexcusably poor, and it honestly looks more like a fan film than anything else. <laughs> Number 2, Fist of the North Star. Fist of the North Star is a well-regarded anime classic of the 80s, with a mix of Mad Max-style setting and blood-spattering martial arts. The live-action movie fails to impress on almost every level of that premise. I know. Everything feels subpar compared to the anime, from the acting to the sets to the rather tame action scenes. To be fair, they at least tried to stay faithful to the source by using Kenshiro's signature phrase, but that's probably the best praise that anyone can give this movie. Don't turn your back on me! You're already dead. Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. I don't investigate. I kill. <laughs> Number one, Dragon Ball Evolution. The horror. Terrible casting, weak visuals, weaker action, and a spiritless story. And that's just scratching the surface of everything that's wrong with this adaptation. We have waited forever to see Goku and Vegeta lock fists on the silver screen. Instead, we were given Dragon Ball Evolution. The fan backlash against this film was so great that the world saw a sudden boom in the Super Saiyan population. Seriously, there are few movies so offensively bad that their own director has had to make a public apology. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that I hurt you. I would never do that on purpose. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.